Gotcha. This is dark, and it has huge mass, and it's small. Mm. That's three smoking guns right there. Right. Implicating a supermassive black hole. Space can be scary to think about. The dangers that lurk within the vast expanse of space can be terrifying. And while this applies to the entire concept of space exploration, the one part of it all that has always been intriguing and terrifying at the same time has been black holes. These beasts of power have been the subject of countless researches all across the globe. Scientists have been trying to figure out just what black holes really are and what lies in them. But all of that changes now. Neil deGrasse Tyson just revealed something huge. And, and our black hole is less massive than the one in the center of the Andromeda galaxy, our nearest big galaxy. Do we have black hole envy? Well, I think we do. We finally see what's inside a black hole. And well, all of it might just blow your mind. So join us as we take you on this intergalactic journey and answer one of history's most asked questions ever. A black hole is an extraordinary phenomenon found in space that is created from a massive explosion. The black hole's mass is concentrated in an incredibly small region, creating a gravitational force so intense that nothing, not even light, can escape from it. Once something is in there, it's going to stay in there forever. These forces of energy come in various sizes, ranging from stellar black holes, which can be a few times the mass of the sun, to supermassive ones that exist at the centers of galaxies and can have millions or even billions of times the mass of our sun. Scientists have observed the effects of black holes indirectly for decades now, and with every piece of data, we uncover hundreds of secrets. Now, even though it seems like they're so massive and powerful that they can't possibly have an origin story, it does. Black holes don't just exist in space, they're created. They need the remnants of massive stars that have exhausted their nuclear fuel to be born. These stars undergo a supernova explosion, a spectacular event that marks the end of their lives. During a supernova, the outer layers of the star are violently expelled into space, while the core undergoes a gravitational collapse. But not all collapses are going to be the same here. If the core's mass is several times larger than that of our sun, the force of gravity overwhelms all other forces, causing the core to collapse inward. This collapse is so intense that it compresses the mass into an incredibly small volume, creating an object with a gravitational field so powerful that nothing will be able to escape its grasp, thus creating a black hole. The size of a black hole is determined by its mass. Stellar black holes, which are the most commonly known type, have a mass range from a few times to several tens of times that of our sun. At the core of a black hole lies the singularity, a region of infinite density and space-time curvature. According to our current understanding of physics, the laws of nature break down at this point, and our conventional theories cannot fully explain what happens within the singularity. To truly understand the nature of singularities, we would need to think outside the box a little. In the world of physics, a singularity refers to a point in space-time where certain quantities become infinite or undefined. These singularities appear in various theoretical contexts, such as at the beginning of an expanding universe, which is commonly known as the Big Bang Singularity, and within the inside of black holes. When we study the Big Bang singularity, a fundamental challenge comes forward. According to the theory, the universe originated from an extremely hot and dense state about 13.8 billion years ago. But as we rewind time toward this initial state, the equations of general relativity, which govern the behavior of gravity, break down. This breakdown implies that our current understanding of physics cannot fully describe the conditions at the moment of the Big Bang. Resolving this issue requires a theory that combines general relativity with the principles of quantum mechanics. You see, black holes contain singularities at their cores. These are regions where the gravitational pull becomes infinitely strong and space-time is highly curved. According to general relativity, matter and energy that fall into a black hole reach its singularity and become infinitely compressed. 
This concept, too, is beyond our concepts of psychics, adding to the problem here. The challenge of singularities has motivated scientists to search for a theory of quantum gravity, which aims to unify the principles of general relativity and quantum mechanics once and for all. So there's at least a little bit of clarity here. Quantum gravity seeks to provide a framework that accounts for the behavior of space-time on both cosmic and subatomic scales. A theory like this could potentially offer insights into the nature of singularities and how the universe really works. One approach to addressing the issue of singularities is the theory of loop quantum gravity. This theory suggests that at extremely small scales, space-time is quantized, meaning it consists of discrete, indivisible units, everywhere. These fundamental units are often referred to as loops or spin networks. In loop quantum gravity, the concept of quantization is applied to space-time itself. This means that space-time isn't considered as a continuous and infinitely divisible entity, but rather as a collection of discrete elements. These discrete units of space-time are often seen as interconnected loops or networks that represent the underlying structure of the fabric of the universe. Within the framework of loop quantum gravity, singularities associated with black holes and the Big Bang could be resolved. One of the key insights of this theory is that at extremely small scales, the discrete nature of space-time prevents the occurrence of infinite densities and curvatures that give rise to singularities in classical general relativity. For example, in the context of black holes, Loop quantum gravity suggests that as matter collapses toward the core, the space-time fabric becomes increasingly tiny. The size prevents the matter from reaching an infinitely dense singularity. Instead, the collapsing matter encounters a quantum bounce near the core, where it rebounds and begins to expand again. This scenario leads to the formation of a new space-time region inside the black hole, often referred to as a quantum black hole or a bounce region. The bounce region replaces the classical singularity, allowing for a resolution of the singularity problem. Similarly, in the case of the Big Bang singularity, loop quantum gravity proposes that the universe's initial state was not characterized by an infinitely dense and singular point. Instead, the universe emerged from a pre-existing quantum gravitational phase where the nature of space-time prevents the occurrence of a singularity. This provides a new perspective on the origin and evolution of the universe, avoiding the singularities present in classical models. The search for a unifying theory is driven by the desire to reconcile the classical treatment of singularities in physics with the principles of quantum physics. Bridging this gap could potentially yield new insights and resolutions to the challenges posed by singularities. But then again, there are so many types of black holes that even this proposed solution gets left behind. Stellar black holes are the most commonly observed type of black hole in the universe, as we've briefly touched upon earlier on in this video. They are formed through gravitational collapse at the end of a massive star's life. The way all of this works is, once a massive star has consumed all its nuclear fuel, the outward pressure generated by nuclear reactions can no longer counteract the force of gravity pulling inward. The gravitational force becomes dominant, causing the star to collapse under its own weight. This collapse results in the formation of a stellar black hole. But as the star collapses, it becomes incredibly compact, packing a significant amount of mass into a very small volume. As a result, stellar black holes typically have a mass ranging from a few times to about 20 times that of the Sun. Although despite their mass, they have remarkably small sizes, their diameter is only a few kilometers, which just goes to show how extremely dense they are. The immense density of a stellar black hole leads to the formation of an event horizon, a boundary beyond which nothing, not even light, can escape. This event horizon marks the point of no return, where the gravitational pull of the black hole becomes so strong that any object or information that crosses it is trapped forever within the black hole. Then we've got intermediate mass black holes. While the precise mass range for intermediate mass black holes is still something scientists need to put through more research and refinement, they are generally thought to have masses ranging from thousands to tens of thousands of times that of the Sun. So that would be much denser than a stellar black hole. The formation mechanisms of intermediate mass black holes are still not entirely understood, but there are two primary scenarios that are currently being investigated. 
The first possibility is that they form through the merging of multiple stellar mass black holes. In regions of space with a high concentration of massive stars, such as globular clusters or galactic nuclei, interactions between stars can lead to the formation of binary systems. Over time, these binary systems can merge because of gravitational interactions, eventually resulting in the creation of an intermediate mass black hole. The second formation scenario proposes that intermediate mass black holes form through the direct collapse of massive gas clouds in the early universe. These gas clouds, which are dense regions of primordial matter, can undergo rapid gravitational collapse, leading to the formation of an intermediate mass black hole instead of a star. This process may have been more common in the early stages of galaxy formation when gas concentrations were higher which is why stellar black holes are a lot more common now. One of the main things about intermediate mass black holes is that they're extremely challenging to detect because of their mysterious nature and the limited number. However, their presence has been detected through indirect means, such as studying the dynamics of stars and gas near these potential black holes. Not only that, but recent observations have provided some evidence for the existence of intermediate mass black holes in galactic nuclei, too. So they might not end up being as sparse as we have always thought they were. Supermassive black holes are the big guns of the black hole family, with masses that range from millions to billions of times that of the Sun. These colossal beasts occupy the central regions of most galaxies, including our own Milky Way. They hold significant gravitational sway over their galactic surroundings and have a profound impact on the evolution of galaxies. The formation of supermassive black holes remains an active area of research and is still not fully understood, but even then, lots of different theories have been proposed to explain their origins. One prominent hypothesis suggests that supermassive black holes evolved from smaller black holes through a process called accretion. According to this idea, as matter such as gas, dust, and stars accumulates around a black hole, it forms a swirling disk known as an accretion disk. The black hole's immense gravitational pull draws material from this disk, causing it to spiral inward and ultimately merge with the black hole. Over vast periods of time, this continuous accretion of matter allows the black hole to grow into a supermassive scale. During the accretion process, enormous amounts of gravitational potential energy are released as the matter falls into the black hole. This released energy powers some of the brightest and most powerful phenomena in the universe. But away from all of that are charged black holes, which represent a fascinating variation of black holes, characterized by the presence of an electric charge. There are two main types of charged black holes, Reisner-Nordstrom black holes and Kerr-Newman black holes. Each type exhibits distinct properties that are formed from the relationship between the black hole's charge and other factors such as rotation. Reisner-Nordstrom black holes are charged, but non-rotating. They are described by the Reisner-Nordstrom solution in the framework of general relativity. The charge of these black holes affects the behavior of their gravitational field. However, in terms of their overall structure, Reisner-Nordstrom black holes are similar to uncharged black holes. They possess an event horizon, but the size of the event horizon for a Reissner-Nordstrom black hole depends on both its mass and electric charge. On the other hand, Kerr-Newman black holes are charged and rotating. They are described by the Kerr-Newman solution in general relativity. The combination of electric charge and rotation introduces unique phenomena associated with these black holes. One of the notable effects is called frame dragging, which occurs because the rotating black hole drags and twists the surrounding space-time. Kerr-Newman black holes have both an event horizon and an inner region known as the Cauchy horizon. This is an inner boundary within the black hole that separates the exterior region from the region where the singularity is located. The properties of the Cauchy horizon are influenced by the black hole's charge and rotation, and they contribute to the intricate dynamics near the center of the black hole. At the Cauchy horizon, the effects of the black hole's charge and rotation become significant. The Cauchy horizon is associated with a problem known as the cosmic censorship hypothesis, which is a conjecture in general relativity. This particular hypothesis suggests that singularities within black holes are always hidden behind event horizons, ensuring that we can't see whatever effects they might have on the external universe. 
The behavior of the Cauchy horizon is intimately connected to the validity of this hypothesis. If the cosmic censorship hypothesis holds true, the Cauchy horizon would remain hidden within the black hole, and its intricate dynamics wouldn't be observable from the outside. So to say that it's important would be an understatement. But there's another side to them as well. Unexplored and hypothetical black holes present interesting avenues for scientific exploration within the realm of astrophysics. While the types of black holes mentioned earlier are well known, there are still unexplored frontiers in black hole research. One area of ongoing investigation is the existence of primordial black holes. These are hypothetical black holes that could have formed in the early universe, shortly after the Big Bang. Primordial black holes would have emerged from regions of extreme density fluctuations, and their formation mechanisms differ from those of stellar black holes. They could have a wide range of masses, including tiny black holes known as micro-black holes, making them much different than any other type of black holes we usually encounter. Another fascinating avenue is the exploration of rotating black holes with extreme angular momentum. These black holes, known as extremal black holes, are hypothetical objects that spin at their maximum possible rates. They are of great interest because they push the limits of our current understanding of black hole physics, but no matter which type of black hole you're talking about, the one concept that always comes up alongside it is that of dark matter. Dark matter is a unique form of matter that takes over a significant portion of the mass in the universe, far surpassing the amount of ordinary matter that we can directly observe. It's called dark because it doesn't interact with light or other forms of electromagnetic radiation, making it difficult to detect and study. Its presence is actually detected from its gravitational effects on visible matter and the large-scale structure of the cosmos. While the exact nature of dark matter remains unknown, several theories suggest that it played a crucial role in the formation and evolution of galaxies, including the formation of black holes. One theory here proposes that dark matter acts as the scaffolding and galaxies assemble on it. Its gravitational pull helps gather ordinary matter, such as gas and dust, leading to the formation of massive structures like galaxies. As these structures evolve, they can eventually give rise to the conditions necessary for the formation of black holes. Dark matter, through its gravitational influence, plays a fundamental role in shaping the distribution of matter in the universe and creating the right circumstances for the formation of black holes. Another possibility is that dark matter itself could be composed of primordial black holes. If dark matter consists of these primordial black holes, their gravitational interactions would have influenced the dynamics of the early universe, potentially leading to the formation of more stars and galaxies around them. However, it is important to note that while dark matter is pretty much everywhere, it's unlikely to directly form black holes. Black holes, as we currently understand them, are thought to form from the collapse of normal matter, such as massive stars. Spinning and charged black holes, on the other hand, seem to have potential connections to dark matter. The presence of spin or electric charge in black holes may extend their lifetimes and allow them to be around for longer periods. This could make them a viable source or reservoir for dark matter particles, potentially shedding light on the nature of dark matter and its role in the formation and evolution of the universe. But most of the information comes from studying known black holes in as much detail as possible, and as difficult as that may be, we've got the tools to do it. The Very Large Telescope at the Paranal Observatory in Chile is equipped with four individual telescopes, each with a primary mirror measuring 8.2 meters in diameter. The VLT is equipped with a variety of advanced instruments, such as the spectrograph for integral field observations in the near-infrared and the multi-unit spectroscopic explorer, which help get a closer look at black holes across different wavelengths. These instruments provide high-resolution imaging and spectroscopic capabilities to study the dynamics, composition, and behavior of black holes. Then, we've got Event Horizon Telescope. This is a global network of radio telescopes synchronized to observe simultaneously, effectively creating a virtual Earth-sized telescope. Combining the signals received from multiple telescopes around the world allows the EHT to achieve an unprecedented level of resolution and can capture detailed images of black holes. 
The collaboration made history in 2019 by capturing the first direct image of a black hole's event horizon, specifically the supermassive black hole located at the center of the galaxy M87. This groundbreaking achievement provided visual evidence for the existence of black holes and offered insights into their structure and surrounding environment. But we're just getting started here. There's also a gravity instrument. This is an interferometric instrument installed at the VLT in Chile. It combines the light received from four telescopes of the VLT, creating an interferometer capable of achieving extremely high angular resolution. Gravity's primary goal is to study the immediate vicinity of black holes, including their accretion disks, jets, and gravitational interactions with surrounding stars. And it does its job perfectly. But it gets a little bit of help from the extremely large telescope. The ELT is the world's largest optical and infrared telescope once completed. With a primary mirror diameter of 39 meters, it can offer an extremely powerful light-gathering power. The ELT's advanced adaptive optic systems will correct for atmospheric distortions, delivering exceptionally clear images. This cutting-edge telescope will be instrumental in studying black holes and other astronomical phenomena. And with that, we can observe the dynamics of black hole accretion, the growth of supermassive black holes, and the connection between black holes and their host galaxies in greater detail than ever before. Astronomers also observe the orbits of stars around black holes to detect the presence of dark matter because of its gravitational influence on the stellar motion within galaxies. When studying the motion of stars around a black hole, astronomers analyze how the gravitational pull from visible matter, such as stars and gas clouds, affects the stellar orbits. If the observed motion can't be explained by the visible matter alone, it suggests the existence of additional mass which is attributed to dark matter. Dark matter is an invisible and elusive form of matter that does not interact with light or other electromagnetic radiation. Its presence can only be inferred through its gravitational effects on surrounding objects. As stars orbit around a central black hole, the gravitational pull from dark matter, if present, influences their trajectories. But that's where scientists need to pull out all the stops and research in a way that actually does end up making a difference. One approach is to study binary systems where a black hole is in a gravitational dance with a companion star. Monitoring the orbital motion of the companion star means that astronomers can analyze its decay rate. If the decay is slower than predicted by known physical laws, it suggests the presence of additional mass influencing the orbit, which could be attributed to dark matter. This phenomenon has been observed in certain binary systems, supporting the idea that black holes are surrounded by substantial amounts of dark matter. Another method involves examining the orbital times of stars near black holes. Astronomers measure the time it takes for a star to complete an orbit around a black hole and compare it to theoretical predictions. If the observed orbital time is significantly shorter than expected, it could indicate the influence of additional mass from dark matter surrounding the black hole. There is also the possibility of dark matter being super-concentrated around black holes. Astronomers investigate the behavior of stars in the vicinity of black holes to indirectly measure the properties of dark matter. When you can't see one of the main components that you're studying, you have to rely on everything around it to do anything. As the interstellar matter crosses the event horizon, it becomes trapped within the black hole's gravitational grasp. The matter is unable to escape due to the overwhelming gravitational force exerted by the black hole. As the matter spirals closer to the black hole, it forms its own accretion disk. The accretion disk is a result of the angular momentum of the falling matter, causing it to orbit the black hole before eventually being consumed. It becomes trapped within the black hole's gravitational grasp. The matter can't escape because of the overwhelming gravitational force exerted by the black hole. But there are still lots of questions about the inner workings of a black hole. Neil deGrasse Tyson, a renowned astrophysicist, has provided insights, keeping concepts of wormholes and black holes, which relate to the possibility of these cosmic phenomena serving as portals to other universes. In a video posted on YouTube in 2015, he dives into the physics behind these intriguing phenomena. Tyson explains that wormholes are hypothetical structures that could potentially connect two distant points in space-time, 
essentially creating a shortcut or a bridge between different regions of the universe. While wormholes remain speculative and theoretical, they have captured the imagination of scientists and science fiction enthusiasts alike due to their potential for enabling faster-than-light travel and facilitating interstellar journeys. Regarding black holes, though, Tyson touches upon the notion of them being portals to other universes. He says that black holes are regions of space where the gravitational pull is incredibly strong. In some theoretical models, black holes could potentially serve as gateways or portals to other universes. The extreme gravitational forces within black holes, according to these theories, might create a pathway or connection to different parts of the cosmos. If black holes were discovered to have a wormhole on the other side, it would pretty much turn things upside down. The existence of a wormhole within a black hole would suggest the presence of a pathway or bridge connecting distant regions of the universe. This would challenge our conventional understanding of space, allowing for the potential of interstellar travel or even access to other galaxies or universes. Not only that, but black holes are already powerful objects. But the presence of a wormhole within them would add another layer of complexity. It would imply that black holes possess not only immense gravitational forces, but also the ability to sustain and facilitate a wormhole. This could provide new insights into the fundamental physics governing black holes and the nature of space-time itself. But that's not all. If the other end of a black hole's wormhole leads to another universe, it would support the notion of a multiverse where multiple universes coexist. And in a way, that's great, because it's been a massive topic in pop culture for the past few years. So if it does happen, at least we'd understand it all. Investigating these connections could shed light on the properties and characteristics of parallel universes, potentially revealing different physical laws and constants. On top of all of that, the presence of traversable wormholes within black holes could challenge our understanding of time and causality, too. It raises the possibility of not only traveling through space, but also moving through time, enabling journeys to the past or the future. But Neil isn't the only one bringing forward the time-traveling concept here. There are lots of theories that suggest that black holes could actually serve as natural time machines. One intriguing aspect here is the phenomenon of time dilation, where the passage of time is affected by the intense gravitational pull of a black hole. Near a black hole, time can be dramatically distorted, leading to significant differences in the rate at which it passes compared to distant observers. For instance, it has been suggested that spending a year in close proximity to a black hole might be equivalent to experiencing several decades or even centuries on Earth. This time dilation effect is what sparks the possibility of time travel with black holes. It raises the idea that traversing through the intense gravitational field of a black hole could potentially transport an individual into a different temporal reference frame. The extreme curvature of space-time caused by black holes creates fascinating theoretical scenarios. It is possible that space and time can be so severely warped near a black hole that they could fold back onto themselves, forming what is known as a closed, time-like curve. This concept suggests the existence of a time loop, where one could theoretically traverse a path that leads back to their own past. This might just be one of the most dangerous types of time travel, where no one really knows where the beginning or the end may be. But at this point, it's also important to note that even though it sounds super interesting, venturing beyond the event horizon, the boundary of no return surrounding a black hole, has significant consequences. The gravitational pull near the event horizon creates an increasingly steep gravitational potential, making it exceptionally difficult to escape the clutches of the black hole. It is speculated that the immense forces involved would likely result in severe gravitational tidal forces, tearing apart anything that ventures too close. Even the black holes that exist within our galaxy are strong enough to do that. This brings us to the one question everyone always seems to ask. What does all of that mean for the Earth? Could it literally get swallowed whole by a black hole unexpectedly? Well, the answer to this one is a little complicated. Black holes are incredibly dense objects with an extremely strong gravitational pull. While there are some supermassive black holes scattered throughout our Milky Way galaxy, the probability of Earth being directly swallowed by one is very low. At least right now. 
Our own sun would actually need to collapse into a black hole of the same mass for any significant change in Earth's gravitational force, and this scenario would not pose a threat to our planet. The closest known black hole to Earth, V616 Monocerotis, is still too far away to impact us. It's approximately 6.6 .6 times more massive than our sun, and for Earth to be torn apart by its gravitational forces, we would need to come within about 800,000 kilometers of it. An event like that is highly unlikely to occur in our lifetime, though, so this one's just for the books. A more distant concern arises from the potential collision of our galaxy with another. In this scenario, the gravitational interactions could propel Earth toward the galactic center, where a supermassive black hole lives. But don't be alarmed. This collision is projected to happen around 4 billion years in the future, providing ample time for the evolution and fate of our planet to unfold through natural processes. In the hypothetical scenario where Earth does approach the event horizon of a black hole, the side of our planet closest to the black hole would experience a significantly stronger gravitational force compared to the far side. The resulting tidal forces would lead to the total destruction of our planet. However, the experience within the black hole's event horizon would initially appear unchanged, at least for a brief period. It's crucial to understand that the likelihood of Earth encountering a black hole directly is extremely small. Our galaxy's black hole, which already has a mass millions of times that of the Sun, is not a threat to us right now. Plus, stars near the black hole have likely already been consumed, while those farther away are relatively safe from its gravitational pull. So for now, the Earth might just be safe. But now that we do know the dangers that lie inside black holes, do you think it's wise to explore the possibility of time travel through them anyway? Let us know in the comments below. If you liked this video, please give it a thumbs up, and like always, we'll see you guys next time.